Okay, welcome to the presentation on tense for the personal narrative. Um, a couple things you might need out in front of you before we start. Um, make sure you have salvation. Make sure you have my first love story. And there is, I actually just posted a handout called tense aspect chart. Um, it is posted under the tense subfolder in D2L. So those are the things you're going to need as we start this presentation. Okay, remember the axe you drew? It's time to kind of talk about that a little bit um, more because initially we were just looking at the axe in terms of what's the best order to tell your story. And we know that you can go in chronological order and that is one way to do it. So that's how the three little pig stories started. And then, you know, we messed up the order, we rearranged the pictures and we tried telling it a different way. Um, the same was done with, um, it was good, the good daughter. So you've already done that, but the minute you decide to change the order of your acts, you're going to have to deal with verb tense. And that's where things get a little tricky. Okay. So I want you to, um, picture your story, your narrative, and it takes place where the star is. Do you see the I want you to be looking at the timeline at the bottom of the um, slide. So if your narrative takes place at the time of the star, sometimes in order to give context to that event, you might have to talk about things that happened before your narrative. And sometimes you'll want to update on something that happened after your story, but still might be in the past from where you are in present time. So if you're over where the smiley face is at the end, if that's present time, um, sometimes you're, you're going to be talking about events that are all along that timeline before and after the event in the past. That's your narrative. So there's a couple different ways to handle tense in writing. Um, and this is where you'll probably want to be looking at your tense aspect chart because it goes over the four. So that there's the simple past, the past perfect, the past progressive, and the past perfect progressive. So go to the next slide and I'm going to talk about those more specifically. All right. So the simple past is just simply used for an action that occurred in the past and does not extend to the present. So it's all done. It already happened and it's finished. So for example, you can see the sentence there. She yelled at him as he left. This already happened. It's over. And so it's simple past. That is the tense you will probably be using most of the time. Um, the next is the past perfect. This indicates a completed, perfected action or condition that's happened in the past. So look at the sentence, she had yelled at him before. So you can see now the verb phrase is had yelled. In simple past, it's just yelled. And now it's had yelled. And again, that indicates that it, it, the yelling had happened at a finite time before. So she had yelled at him before means that it happened and it's over. All right. The past progressive indicates an ongoing action in progress at some, at some point in time. So she was yelling because she was just so tired. Now the verb phrases was yelling. So you can see uh, the, the verb yelled, even though it was used as in the simple past and the past perfect with the ED ending. Now it has the ING ending, which gives it that progressive feel that it's happening still. And then you have was, which is your past tense verb. She was yelling. And that's why she was doing it. This event still happened in the past, but it's called the past progressive. Now, the last one is the past perfect progressive, which indicates a continuous action that was completed at some point in the past. So now we're just combining everything, right? So a continuous action, but the action is now done. All right, so look at the sentence and look at the way the verb phrase changes. She had been yelling at him when he left the first time. So had been yelling is now your verb phrase. So yelled moves to yelling just like the, the past progressive because you need the ing ending to show that it's a continuous ongoing action. And then you have had been, okay, which steals the, from the past perfect, the had, and then you have the been, which is still the past tense. Okay, so hopefully those make sense to you. And what I wanna help you understand at this point is don't panic about this. You might be panicking and thinking, oh my gosh, that sounds really complicated. What I want you to know, you already do this. When you are telling a story that it has already happened, 
um, you naturally do this. This is how we naturally talk. So you're doing these uh, verb tense shifts already. We just want to make sure that, hey, now you know what you're doing. Um, okay, so don't panic about all the lingo. The jargon is not going to matter so much moving forward, but this is what you're doing. So I just wanted to show you this first. Okay. So I want you to look at salvation and my first love story. You'll probably need to pause the presentation here. And I want you to notice, like look through the essay, reread it and pay attention to how the author frames time. How does Langston Hughes and how does, I think her name is Evelyn Lauer, how do, how do they frame time? Because both of them um, talk about events that happened in the past, but Langston Hughes does deal with a little bit of things that had happened before the event he's talking about. Evelyn Lauer, she is giving you a remembered event in past tense, but she kind of switches around quite a bit. She talks about events that happened before that event, events that happened after, and she talks about present tense. And she even goes into future tense at one point. So how do they frame time? How do they handle events that happened before the narrative? How do they handle events that happened after? What kind of words does the author use to signal time shifts? So pause the presentation there and reread your essays and see what you can do to deal with verb tense. Okay, we're gonna look at salvation first. So I hopefully you have that essay out in front of you. And the first part I wanna look at are just the first two paragraphs. So um, in the very beginning you have, I was saved from sin when I was going on 13, but not really saved. It happened like this. By the way, I just have to tell you how much I love the sentence fluency of that very beginning. And then it says, there was a big revival at my Auntie Reed's church. Every night for weeks, there had been much preaching, singing, praying, and shouting, and some very hardened sinners had been brought to Christ. Well, there's your past perfect progressive. Your verb phrase is had been preaching and had been brought. So there's your past perfect progressive. Um, further down in that sentence, you have, and the membership of the church, Membership of the church had grown by leaps and bounds. There's your past perfect, had grown. So again, that sounds very natural. You probably didn't even really notice it when you first read it. But the point is, is that all of these things, so the, the revival had been going on. So all of that took place before the event that Langston's going to talk about. So he had to notate that in the way his verb, verbs were structured. Okay. Um, so then the only other place to look is maybe the very last paragraph. Um, there's a couple other examples actually when, um, right before Langston gets up. So maybe we should look there first. It's the paragraph that starts, now it was really getting late. I began to be ashamed of myself holding everything up so long. I began to wonder what God thought about Wesley, who certainly hadn't seen Jesus either, but who was now sitting proudly. Was sitting is your past progressive. And then you have uh, further down, uh, God had not struck Wesley dead, and there's your past perfect, okay? So that Wesley's event had happened previous in time from where Langston is, is in time at this point in his story. Now the last paragraph, you have some verb phrases at the very end of this. It's in the middle of, maybe the middle of the last paragraph. She woke up and told my uncle I was crying because the Holy Ghost had come into my life and because I had seen Jesus, but I was really crying because I couldn't bear to tell her that I had lied, that I had deceived everybody in the church and I hadn't seen Jesus. Um, there's a lot of past perfect in the very uh, last part, but then there's also the past progressive in the phrase, she woke up and told my uncle I was crying. Um, and again, that's that continuous action that's happening in the past. And then you've got the past perfect, I had lied and that had already happened. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing how these verb phrases um, sound in the text and how natural they sound and how much it makes sense that the verb phrases are worded the way that they are. So think about that first section. If you have any questions, you know you can always email me. Okay, we're gonna look at my first love story now. So in this one, um, one of the things she does, and it's right in the beginning. So do you see right after the song lyrics? Um, in the very first part of the essay. So we're about a third of the way down the page on the first page where it's right after the lyrics, I had never been kissed before. 
And again, that shows time because that happened. I had never been kissed is what ha had happened before the event she's talking about. Um, then towards the bottom of the page is the third paragraph from the bottom where it says, you will never kiss anyone again like how you kiss someone when you're in high school. Now, the fact that you will never do that again, she's talking about your future. And then she says, remember this, and that's present tense. She wants you now to remember this. She's telling you that. There is something innocent and passionate about the high school sweetheart relationship when your biggest concern is your grade. So all of that is present tense. And then if you look at the next paragraph, of course, Dan and I broke up. Well, now we're in past tense again because she's back to her event. Okay, um, then... Let's see, at the very end of the essay, she switches back to present tense. Years later, now married to another man who is the father of my two sons. I look back, all that's happening now. Thanks to Facebook, I no longer have to wonder about the boy who wore high tops and danced with me in the street. The night before he left for college, I see pictures, I see his vacations, I know he is out there. All of that is present tense. Okay. Um, hopefully you're feeling pretty good about this so far. If you need more help, um, go to the Shifty Tenses. It's from the Indiana University of Pennsylvania Writing Center. I think it will help you. It kind of repeats everything that I've just talked about and gives you another example writing where the author is shifting time and shifting tense because of that. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions. And again, don't panic about the jargon, just know that you already know how to do this. When you are telling a story or talking about any event in the past, you already know to use these verb constructions. All right, let me know what questions you have and have a great week.